So we've seen how both wealth and power are pursued for certain reasons, but the more they're pursued for these reasons, the less you get what you pursue them for. And the same will occur for the other common goods of fortune, and that is fame and physical pleasure. Why do people seek fame? They seek it because they want to be loved and admired by a bunch of people. We all want to be loved. That's why you have that Saturday night skit that's so funny where the person goes, I just want to be loved. Is that so wrong? No, it's not wrong. And that's why we pursue fame. We want to be loved and admired. And why do we want to be loved and admired? Well, we want to belong. We, we do want people to recognize our talent. We want the glory and greatness that comes with being good. And so really, we want fame to prove our self-worth, too. We think the more famous we are, the more, the, the more our view of ourselves will be secured, that we are good, that we are worth it. And then, of course, a lot of people pursue fame for type of immortality. They may not believe that they're going to have an afterlife. They might believe this is it. After they die, that's the end. But they want to be remembered. They want to leave their mark on the world. And, they, and thus achieve a kind of immortality for their name. So, does fame give us these things? Does fame, the more fame we have, does that mean that we're more loved and we're more admired? Does the more fame we have mean that our, our self-worth is more secure? Does the more fame we have mean that we have this immortality for our name? And in fact, we know none of this is true. If we just give it a moment's thought, we see that actually just the opposite occurs. Think about being loved and admired. Who gets fame? Is it necessarily the great people? What about Kim Kardashian? What did she do to become famous? Isn't she famous just for being famous? So can she use her fame to say, wow, I'm really worth it. Or can people who are famous say, because so many people love me, then I am truly loved. Notice the word that's key here is I. The more famous I am, the less people know me. More people think they know me, but more people just have an ideal. All they have is actually not my true face, but merely a facade. And so thus, the more fame I have, the less people know me. And the less people know me, even if they love me, they don't really love me. They love the image that has been produced, the hype. And so I know this. I know that the more fame I have, the more people will come and think that they know me. The more they think that they admire me, but they don't really admire me. They admire my public image, especially if I'm an actor. If I'm a famous actor, I am famous for faking it. I have faked personalities so well that people love me. But they don't love me. They love the persona I fake. And so that's why it's very interesting that when you see among actors and famous people in Hollywood, it's not a higher self-esteem, not a more secure self, but mentally more unstable. These are the people who have the most problems with drugs. These are the people who go into rehab. These are the people who have the worst problems with relationships, precisely because the people they marry or the people they get close to are in love with their image. We know this. We call it Facebook. I call it facade book. Why are people so addicted to social media? Because they're able to do what famous people before could only do. And that's create an image of themselves that's lovable. But what they create is never themselves. It's always their best day. They never put their bad hair day up. They never put their crying pictures. They never put their, the things that make them look bad. It's only the things that look good. And that is why psychologists have said that if you want to increase your own self-esteem, if you're feeling depressed, the key is to look at your own Facebook page and scroll through it. When you look at it, you will see what a great life you have, and it will actually increase your happiness. 
But if you want to be depressed, then here's what you do. You look at your Facebook feed. And when you look at the Facebook feed, you see everybody's great life and you see what you're not doing. You see the vacation they're on that you're not on. But what you're not seeing is what they really are. That's fame. Fame is a facade and a facade is fake. And so if you're in it to be loved and admired, then what is loved and admired is not you, but your image. If you're there to prove your self-worth, you know that's silly because you know so many people are famous for stupid things. Those who have glory for being really good are few and far between. And even if it's true, they have to maintain it. And so it becomes unstable. How many people have a hit single and we call it a one hit wonder? How did they feel that they achieved this fame and now can never get it again? Or take child actors who become famous too early and then lose all that fame. What happens to them? So the fame that is meant to shore up their self-worth destroys it. The fame that is meant to get people to love you doesn't get them to love you, but a mere image of you because they can never get the real you. There's too many of them. And then finally, immortality, that's silly. Here's the one thing we know about time, it continues. And as time continues, people forget you. Isn't that true? Some of you know that my first name is Troy. Do you know why I was named Troy? I was named after a famous actor. One who was really famous at the time that my mom named me, Troy Donahue. Troy who? Most of you probably don't even know who Troy Donahue was, but he was really famous. Just a generation later and nobody knows who he was. That's what happens. Even the most famous people, even Einstein eventually will be forgotten. Take 10,000 years and see what happens. Take a million years when the sun blows out in a couple billion. What will happen then? The human race is just a blip in the eternity of time so that eventually everything everybody has done will be forgotten. It will be as if none of us existed. And so to think that somehow fame will get you immortality is silly because it depends on people remembering and most people don't even know who their great grandparents are. So fame, we seek it to be loved, to prove our self-worth, to get immortality, but when we seek it, we destroy the very things we're seeking. We become less of the person we want to be loved, and therefore what is loved is not us. We become less worthwhile to ourselves because we know that what people love is not us, and so we really can't be secure in that. And what we seek is something that will inevitably always be forgotten. Well then, what about just living a pleasurable life, right? Just live for the moment. Just go for the gusto before it turns to rusto. Physical pleasure. Isn't why what we want wealth for and power and all these other things is because we want to have an enjoyable, fun, and satisfying life? You might say this is what appeals to Americans most of all. The idea of seizing the day and enjoying the physical pleasures of the moment while we still have them. So let's make that our God, right? Let's make that our soul happiness. Pursue that with a single-mindedness. And what happens? What always happens with pleasure? It must stop. Why? Well, pleasure, again, isn't your normal state of affairs. Right now, I'm standing here, and I'm not in pain. But I'm also not experiencing any pleasure. Pleasure is something that's above and beyond, isn't it? It's like luxury. That's why luxury produces pleasure. What luxury is, is the, the pleasure you receive from this wealth. So, this pleasure, what makes it pleasure is it's climactic. It's, in, it's exhilarating. It's, it's something that is ecstatic. And the word ecstasy literally means to bring you above and beyond your normal state of self. And so pleasure by its very nature is above and beyond. It's extraordinary experience and therefore it can't last. Why can't it last? Well, see, it did last. You'd go crazy, first of all. Think of sexual climax that lasted forever, that didn't have a come down. You'd go crazy. 
or so what must inevitably happen for pleasure to remain pleasure and not pain is for it to go away, for it to stop. So pleasure, physical pleasure, must be temporary. But then what does that mean? Well, once it's temporary, because it was so good, it has attracted you, hasn't it? It has hooked you. Now you want it again. So you go for it again. But we know the law of diminishing returns, don't we? That for every ecstatic experience you have, it takes more to produce less. Because either it becomes the new norm, and therefore is not extraordinary, is not exhilarating, is not fun anymore, but boring, or it, you will have to, and therefore you have to produce some other pleasure, or it's not pleasure at all. And so the key here is that with pleasure, if that's what you're pursuing, then you have to do more to get less. The law of diminishing returns, which means you become a slave to this pleasure. And therefore, the same pleasure that was so enjoyable before now becomes moderately enjoyable the second time. And the third time, maybe not enjoyable at all. And so therefore, you need something new, more exhilarating. You need more for less. And therefore, it takes more to make you happy, doesn't it? Because you have experienced so much pleasure that now you become jaded. My wife and I have experienced this as we get older from the fact that we have more money so we eat out more often. Now before it was a treat to eat out because we would eat at home and we would eat our normal food and it would be good but it wouldn't be extraordinarily pleasurable or tasty but now that we have more money we can go to the better restaurants and so every week we'd go three or four times to these restaurants that we love. But if you keep going to the same restaurant, getting the same thing, it becomes old hat. And it becomes less satisfying. And also you start to notice differences. You notice that, oh, that first time you had it, it was really good. But the chef this time, they didn't make it as good this time. It's, it's disappointing now. And so what do you do? You go to a new restaurant and you experience all these different flavors. And, and so what happens is you become jaded with that too. And what became a pleasure and a luxury now again is the new norm. Now you need more money to go to the better restaurants or you just become hungry but you don't really want anything. Have you ever experienced that where you are hungry but you don't feel like any particular food? Why? Because it's all become old hat. So the more you pursue pleasure, the less you catch it, do you, don't you? The more you pursue the extraordinary, exhilarating new experience, the less new and extraordinary and exhilarating it becomes. And therefore, the more you pursue pleasure, the less pleasure you're able to enjoy. And that is why those who pursue pleasure, when they get older, become bored and jaded and cynical with life. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the very things we think will give us happiness, wealth, fame, power, pleasure, not only do not give us happiness, but the more we pursue them, the more happiness is ahead of us. The farther away we are from true happiness, the more we pursue pleasure, the less we're able to enjoy it. The more we pursue fame, the less we sleep, we're able to really feel loved and admired. The more we pursue money, the less, the more money we need to get the same kind of luxury we're pursuing for it. The more we pursue power, the less power we actually have over ourselves or others, and the less security we have. So Boethius, Lady Philosophy tells us, the things you have lost, you had no right to in the first place, you didn't earn them. The things you have lost are worthless. And in fact, not only are they worthless, but they're harmful. They, the more you pursue them, will take you away from your ultimate good. It will take you away from the true happiness that can be found if you know where to seek it. So in our next lesson, we are going to pursue this question of then what is true happiness? If this physical stuff isn't going to give us true happiness, but leads us away from it, and yet all of us desire happiness, then where is it? That's our next question.